James with 17, 5 of 12, 1 of 5 from 3. Drives inside. Right to the rack, James! find one of his shooters in the corner. Screen from Davis, takes it in, James puts it in! Oh, he buzzsaws his way for two! Big plays by James! The lead is four! Ten in the fourth! To 11, 28 to 11, is those two Hall of Famers to be. That's awesome, man. Well, that is awesome to see. I mean, that's like this generation's, you know, bird and magic, right? You end up leading the way with 30 points, but those final two possessions, LeBron, just kind of typical, gets all the way to the hole. What were you looking to do setting the screen and kind of what's the communication with you? As Austin goes by, what's the communication like with you and LeBron on those two possessions? Uh, you know, that's something we've been doing since we, since I've been here. You know, that sideline pick and roll with me and him is pretty unstoppable. Him getting downhill and my dynamic uh, ability to roll. So, uh, you know, he got what he did, what he did. I just tried to get a good screen and let him do what he do. What was the biggest difference defensively in that fourth quarter, holding Phoenix to uh, 11 points? Defensive rebounding. You know, it just our activity. Uh, obviously, getting back in transition, getting in front of the ball, our activity behind, you know, obviously, KD was drawing a ton of attention. Um, crowding him, trying to have a guy shifted over, what we call a flood. Some people call it a tilt. But uh, again, like I said, making them see bodies. Um, and then our activity behind that, you know, guys shifted, denying them, mixing up different things off the ball. Um, and ultimately holding them to one possession, forcing turnovers or, or, or holding them to one possession. And um, it worked out. You know, defensive rebound is something I'm going to be harping on all year, um, as well as transition defense. But our in-between game is at a good place right now. And, and you know, we want to strive for that to get better, too. Our pick-and-roll coverages, our DHO coverages, man-to-man -man defense, uh, shifts off the ball. But if, if we're A1 with our transition and our – to start the defense with transition D, finish the defense with defensive rebound, and we'll be okay. And if you're, you're kind of using different rotations and some five out, some four and one, but do you still go to LeBron AD down the stretch there and see LeBron in your 21 and execute like that? Absolutely. It's beautiful to watch, um, and we needed every ounce of it. Uh, you know, for him to have a well balanced game like that, you know, with his defensive rebounds, uh, obviously his assists. His buckets that he was able to score, block shots, two blocks, two steals. His activity was amazing. Uh, same with AD. You know, the three of those guys, Bron, AD, and Christian Wood, really dominated uh, the defensive glass between the three of them. And we needed all of it. Uh, it was a good win to get, a good step in the right direction. And obviously, this is just the start of the marathon. But again, it's, it's a good, good shot in the arm for our daily process of trying to grow and get better. Darvin, uh, LeBron did an on-court interview after the game, was adamant in his dismissal of any criticism uh, pointed towards AD coming off the Denver loss. What about AD? Um, it, it seems like, you know, obviously you, LeBron, are, are some of the leaders on this team and have ultimate faith in him. What about him? Because when we were talking to you pregame, you, uh, you said, I know he's going to come out aggressive. What about him lets you have that confidence in him when he, you know, when sometimes uh, has a game like he had in Denver? I just think, you know, again, seeing his care factor, uh, the type of spirit he has day in and day out, and knowing that he's his own biggest critic. Um, you know, he takes a lot of pride in the way he performs. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, whether he hears the outside noise or not, he knows we have all the faith in the world in him. And that's not going to change. And so uh, we're just going to keep encouraging him and, and, you know, pushing him to be great. And he's going to push himself to be great. And, you know, it's just one of those things where people just, you know, you, you it's the first game of the season. I, I know all eyes is on that and different things were said in the summer or whatever. None of that really matters, man. The kid is a beautiful kid. He's a beautiful human being and highly, highly skilled and talented. 
one of the top players in our league, and you know we're gonna put that put that hedge around him and and, and love on him and, and make sure he uh, understands how important he is to our group and encourage him to be aggressive and assertive. Darvin, uh, LeBron played 35 minutes tonight, including all 12 in the, in the fourth. Did you kind of plan that going in, or, or was that something based on the what you guys are down 12 entering the fourth? Like, how, how did you kind of decide that, and uh, how do you think that worked out? I mean, I think uh, we was we were dragging our feet there for the better part of the first half, and you know things weren't clicking. We weren't making shots, especially from three. Um, and you know, he he has that that spirit, that that intensity. To put the team on his shoulders, and I had timeouts to play with, and so I went to him. I said, "How we feeling? What, we, what, what do you want to do?" And he answered my question, and you guys saw the results. So uh, we used a couple of our timeouts to get some breathers. But you know, all having said all of that, when you got the competitive juices flowing, you got two of the all-time greats on the floor battling, going back and forth like that. You know, it's just it's hard to sit sit out on something like that, that type of scenario. But um, obviously, you know, the recovery process starts now. Um, we got sort of a get what you need day tomorrow, um, and come back in, get on the floor again on Saturday, get ready to go up the sack. But uh, I just um, my hats off to him, man. He never ceases to amaze us, and he cares. He cares. He that's why you see his type of stat line. He's laying it all out for his team and. In year 21, and you know, I just hope a lot of these young pros out here are, are, are looking and seeing what he's doing from off the court, pregame preparation, in-game impact, post-game recovery, and his, his own private sessions of making sure his body is functioning, and not just functioning, but functioning at a high level.